Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Welcome to Golden Blue today, everybody. This is the College Football Channel. So if you like college football, hit the like and subscribe button. It's that simple. Also, send gear to represent your team and be a part of my background forever. All you have to do is send it to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina, 29657. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page. We have a lot of great perks over there. The perk that people seem to enjoy the most, of course, is the score prediction contest where we award $20 every single week to whoever gets closest to the actual score of the game that I pick. We also did a championship week. I will award $25 to that winner and right now is the best time to join patreon because we are going to do the bowl prediction contest first place prize will win fifty dollars second place prize is an autographed golden blue dude flat bill hat and the third place prize is a shout out and the more patrons we get the higher we can bump up the prize so if we get up to three hundred dollars with the patreon pledges we will bump up the prize to seventy five dollars if we get up to four hundred dollars with the patreon pledges we'll bump the prize up to a hundred dollars and so on and so forth so there's even an incentive for current patreon members to increase encourage other people to join Patreon. That way the price goes even higher. I'll leave the link to the Patreon page in the description of this video. It is time for the coaching carousel rundown. As of today, things will change even more. More teams will hire head coaches. More head coaches will leave. So, well, I'll probably have to do another update on this coaching carousel. But as of right now, there's still a lot to talk about. Two extensions to talk about. There, there were three, but one of the coaches that signed an extension is already gone. So only two extensions to talk about. The first one, Lance Leipold. We already knew that from a while back. Kansas extends him. And he said he is committed to Kansas as long as Kansas spends money on their football program, which Kansas is spending money on their football program. So as long as Kansas keeps their side of the deal, then he's going to be staying at Kansas. The second head coach is Sonny Dykes. Sonny Dykes at TCU, and you know what? This falls under the category of be careful because this is exactly what some other teams have done. I'm talking about Florida with Dan Mullen. I'm talking about Michigan State with Mel Tucker, and the list goes on. But specifically, Michigan State with Mel Tucker, in their first year as a head coach, they do tremendous things, and they sign them to a massive extension, a lot of money, big buyouts, and it turns out that was just a one-hit wonder. And TCU is losing a lot from this team this year. I don't think they're going to be as good as what they were this past year. Now, I think they'll be good next year. I think they'll get to a bowl, but they're not going to the playoffs. I'm not saying Sonny Dykes is a bad head coach, but overall, this is not normal as far as the success that Sonny Dykes has. He has success, like an 8-4, and 9-3. and three. Those are good years, but as far as like going 12-1 and one, having an undefeated regular season, no, this is not normal for Sonny Dykes. So I, I don't know about this extension by TCU. I understand the reason why they did this. I mean, they went undefeated in the regular season. They're playing in the playoffs. That's a pretty good reason. But this was year one. This was year one. Before you sign a coach to an extension, shouldn't you see at least a couple years? They're already scared somebody's going to swoop in and get Sonny Dykes. Oh, man, it just it surprised me. And what I tell you all about Michigan State and Mel Tucker, they signed him to a massive extension. I warned Michigan State fans, hey, you guys are going to take a significant step back this year. You're going to miss the ball. And that's exactly what's happened. I'm telling you, TCU fans, be warned about this. I'm not saying he's going to be a bad head coach, but I wouldn't be expecting an undefeated season every year under Sonny Dykes. And you can miss some balls under Sonny Dykes. I mean, look at his previous tenures. He hasn't done that great. He's done all right, but he hasn't been an elite coach. So just be careful with those extensions. Now let's talk about new homes for some new coaches. First up, Matt Rule to Nebraska. I gave that an A- minus higher. That could be potentially an A-plus higher. He is exactly what Nebraska needs. Matt Rule is the type of coach that can get your program out of the gutter sooner rather than later. The only thing that you have to watch out for is Matt Rule using you for a stepping stone. I don't think that Matt Rule is loyal to Nebraska, so Nebraska, watch out if a bigger program or the NFL again comes a calling with bigger money. He could bounce on you. But I think it was a good hire because I do think he will get Nebraska out of this ditch, out of this rut that they're in, and they will have success and be competitive in the Big Ten. Next one is Luke Fickle to Wisconsin, also a great hire for Wisconsin. I gave this an A hire. I think this is just a little bit better than Matt Roll. I think Luke Fickle was at the top of the list as far as Group 5 coaches. That program's wanted and needed. Somehow Wisconsin got him. That's a great hire for Wisconsin. I think Luke Fickle will have Wisconsin point in the right direction sooner rather than later. And Wisconsin isn't as low as Nebraska, so they could be competitive 
representative in the Big Ten as soon as this coming year. They have the talent over there. The next new coach, of course, Hugh Freeze at Auburn. That one surprised me. Auburn was just not the program that checked the boxes that Hugh Freeze laid out. But I guess Auburn was on the list that he gave. Auburn had enough money, and boom, Hugh Freeze is the new head coach at Auburn. I do think this is a good hire. Hugh Freeze is familiar with the SEC West, and I think that he will have success at Auburn. And I know the SEC will be doing away with divisions, or at least they're talking about it. But in general, I do think Auburn will have success under Hugh Freeze. It's just, can he keep his nose clean? The next coach is Deion Sanders of Colorado. This was a big-time splash. I didn't see this coming. I thought the teams that had the chance to get Deion Sanders were Georgia Tech, Florida State, Ole Miss, Texas a and You know, teams in the southeastern part of the United States. Colorado, didn't see it coming. This is a great hire. This has put Colorado on the map immediately. Over 200 players have reached out to Colorado, whether they're recruits or players in the transfer portal. And he's already landed a top 20 recruit for the 2025 recruiting class. Deion Sanders has already put all eyes on Colorado. That's a great hire. Question is, can they keep Deion Sanders? Jamie Chadwell to Liberty. This one surprised me as well because he's coming from Coast. Coastal Carolina to Liberty. This tells me that Liberty definitely has more money than Coastal Carolina. Liberty is headed to Converse USA, so he could have a ton of success at Liberty and then make the jump to the Power 5 level because I think that's exactly what will happen with Jamie Chadwell. I think it will have a ton of success at Liberty. Remember, they're not in a ditch. Hugh Freeze left them in a good situation. Jamie Chadwell is set up for success immediately at Liberty. That's what will happen. He will dominate Conference USA, and then he will make the jump to the Power 5. Next hire was Scott Satterfield of Cincinnati. This hire made absolutely no sense whatsoever. This was a bad, bad hire by Cincinnati. And Cincinnati fans are like, well, who would you hire? That's the best we could do. No, no, it's not the best you could do. You could have went out and got Jamie Chadwell. Jamie Chadwell would have been a better hire than Scott Satterfield. You could have went out and got Sean Clark from Appalachian State. You could have went out and got Charles Huff from Marshall. There's a bunch of names that you could have went out and got that were attainable that were better than Scott Satterfield. This made absolutely no sense. And honestly, Cincinnati fans, I also talked to Louisville fans, and they are grateful. They're like, whew. We avoided that buyout because we wanted to get rid of Scott Satterfield. So they greatly appreciate you fitting the bill for his buyout and taking Scott Satterfield off their hands. Terrible hire by Cincinnati. I don't like this at all. The next hire is Jeff Brom to Louisville. I think this is a good hire by Louisville. Jeff Brom was the head coach of Purdue, and he's had a lot of success at Purdue. you got to realize Purdue is not Michigan. They're not Ohio State. They're not Penn State. They're not up here. They're kind of mid-level. So for the brand that they are, he's had a lot of success over there at Purdue, and he's adapted to this new offense, offense, offense era of college football, and Purdue turned into an offensive football program that put up a lot of points, and that's exactly what Louisville needed because at Louisville, Scott Satterfield, terrible on offense, Pretty good on defense, but right now you need a good offense to have success in college football. I think this is a pretty good hire. Some people disagree with me and say, nah, I think Louisville could have done better than this. And maybe they could, but I still think this is a good hire. Good job, Louisville. I give this hire an A-. minus. Could be a little bit better. We'll see what happens whenever Jeff Brom goes up against some ACC schools. See, that's another thing you got to realize. He was coaching in the Big Ten, and the Big Ten has been a tougher conference than the ACC. So he might have more success at Louisville than he did at Purdue. And he had a lot of success at Purdue. This is a good hire for Louisville. Now there's an opening for Purdue. So I know for a fact that I'll be doing a video on the coach that Purdue hires as well. You see how this goes? And then finally, Tom Herman at FAU. I thought Tom Herman would have been a great fit for West Virginia. A lot of these coaches on this list, I thought West Virginia should have gone after, but they missed the boat on pretty much every one of them. Yeah, come to think about it, every coach that I had on my list has been scooped up. That proves that was a good list. I had a good list. And Tom Herman was attainable. F.A. freaking you got him. Why didn't West Virginia show any interest in Tom Herman? I don't get it. Uh, no, he doesn't fit the culture at West Virginia. Guys, this is about winning. Even if West Virginia became a stepping stone for Tom Herman, we need a coach that will get us out of this ditch immediately. And if they do bounce, at least West Virginia will be in a position to where we could have success after they're gone. Tom Herman would have been a pretty good hire at West Virginia. He has a lot of experience in the Big 12. He wasn't fired from Texas because of lack of success. He was fired from Texas because he butted head with the boosters. He would have been a good hire, but he's off the board as well. This is a great hire for FAU, and it looks like Tom Herman could take the same exact route as Lane Kiffin as far as getting back to the Power 5 level. The only thing different is he didn't go to the Nick Saban Coaching Rehabilitation Center. That's the only difference. Do y'all let me know in the comments section what you think about each one of these hires and which one of these hires sticks out the most to you. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.